Mostly I specialize in creature design, and that's thematically been a uh, through line in my career since I began. My parents were nature illustrators, and so every project that has creatures, again, tries to be as science-oriented as it can be, but still keep it interesting. Prior to Avatar, I had done a book called Expedition, and it was a fictional journey to another world that did not have any kind of civilization involved, but was all creatures. And in this world, which I called Darwin IV, all the creatures had to kind of look like they were interrelated in the same way as the creatures on Earth are. I mean, we're all human. We know when something doesn't work. And through lines and continuity in creature design, in world building, all of those things, if it doesn't have those things, it looks like the dog's breakfast. And people, I think, would respond poorly to it. Hell was completely different than the theoretically logical, biological part of me. It started with a single painting, and that single painting had elements to it that you can see in all of the 40-odd paintings that I did for it. I got involved in that after I read Paradise Lost and thought, this is just such a magnificent work. You know, what was going on in hell after the angels fell, had their battles, all the rest of that? I'm a big student of history. I love ancient history. And so this was a field day for me to try to find demons, incorporate what would have been the kind of armor that the people that worshiped them you know, would have been familiar with, put that into an organic context and put it onto the demon, and then make up my own for, for demons that I just named out of whole cloth. I like it when people say, well, how do we know which ones are real? And I don't usually answer them. And then as archaic as a lot of the stuff was looking in the paintings, there was a part of me that was thinking, well, this, you know, in my head to fool myself, this is happening right now. Don't I strive with the hell work to something I probably won't ever attain, which is a degree of classicism to it. You know, and I just had fun with it. It was really a fun, fun project. What takes sitting around the fire storytelling from 3,000, 5,000 years ago and gives it enough import to make it long lasting? You know, like the Gilgamesh myth. It was probably the, the Star Wars of its day, you know? It was probably pretty cool. And then everybody forgot about it. The longevity of what we create, even the most top grossing movie, you know, I hope Avatar winds up being um, the Wizard of Oz of our time. You know, that it's played every Thanksgiving and generation after generation after generation adore it. Maybe after that happens, it'll have a status that starts to assume a mythology that sort of works within itself. I don't want to be an older guy in the future who can't appreciate, you know, Batman 23 if Chris Nolan has done a great job with it. I don't want to hang up my youthful exuberance for things that might be considered pop.